Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Ferre and I am a fourth grade teacher in Maryland and I am so stinking excited to introduce something new to you all on my channel. This could be the start of something new. You all know I am super passionate about organization. It's like a sickness. But you may not know that I am also super passionate about technology in the classroom. In addition to being a classroom teacher, I am also my school's e-coach, which means I work with teachers in my school and help them integrate technology in their classrooms. If I'm being honest, I feel like I've been holding back a little bit on my channel with sharing technology tips. So that brings me to my new series that I'm calling EdTech Made Easy. Made Easy will be a monthly video series on my channel where I share a different educational technology tool. I'm going to give you a demonstration on how to use that tool and I'm also going to share tips and tricks for implementing it in your classroom. For my first episode of EdTech Made Easy, I wanted to share a completely free online resource called Flippity. This is going to save you so much time and effort, it's not even funny. And did I mention it's free? Flippity is a website or a G Suite add-on that allows you to take a Google spreadsheet and turn it into all kinds of amazing things, including flashcards and a quiz show. Now, I will be honest and say I only really use Flippity for one thing, and that is a random name picker. I'm gonna focus this video on how to use the random name picker template, but keep in mind there are tons of other templates also available for free on Flippity that you may be able to utilize in your classroom. As teachers, we are constantly looking for creative ways to call on students equitably, form student groups, and randomly select students. Flippity allows you to do all of those things in a matter of seconds, and it is extremely versatile. All you have to do is type in your student roster to a spreadsheet one time, and then you can insert instantly randomly select students, form student groups, and even form a line order. Before you get started, you do want to make sure that you have a Google account. If you don't already have a Google account, I will leave a link down in the description box where you can go and sign up for free. Now let's get started on how to add your class roster and manipulate the template. The first step is to access flippity.net, which I will also link for you in the description box. Once you're on the website, you want to locate random name picker. At the bottom of the rectangle, you can either select demo, instructions, or template. If you click on demo, you'll just see an example class, not super useful. If you click on instructions, you will see step-by-step -step directions, but I'm also going to walk you through those in this video if you're more of a visual learner. And if you click on template, you will actually be able to input your own roster. Once you click on template, you will be prompted to make a copy of the template so you can save it to your own personal Google Drive. Just click on the blue make a copy button and then a new copy of the template will open up. The first thing I recommend doing is coming up with a name for your roster such as Miss Foray's class. Now you can only store one roster per template. So if you teach multiple classes like I do, you would wanna repeat those first few steps for each different class that you teach and you wanna name each one something different. For example, homeroom, block one, and block two. Now you're gonna to wanna to enter the name of your roster in two different places. First, you wanna change the title of the Google Sheets by clicking in the title bar at the top. Second, you also wanna change the name of the sheet by right clicking on the demo tab at the bottom and then selecting rename. Once you have renamed your roster, you are ready to start entering your student names starting in cell A2. It is important to mention that you should not edit any of the blue cells, do not delete them, just leave them alone. You can click and drag to select all of the example names that are already entered and then just click backspace in order to delete the text. Obviously, I'm not going to type in my actual students' names, so instead I'm just gonna type in student one, student two, and so on. You may notice that there is a second column titled photo where you are able to link to a photo to represent your student. Unfortunately, you do have to link to a photo that is available on the web. So you could not insert photos from your Google Drive, but you could link to photos that are available on a school website. If you don't wanna use your student's real photograph, you could pick an icon that represents that student's favorite sport or favorite animal or something similar to that. For example, let's say student one really likes sloths because I really like sloths. You can go to Google Images for sloths, find a picture you like, right click and select copy image address. 
Then I would go back to the spreadsheet and paste the address in the cell that is under the photo column next to their name. But note that if you link a photo for one student, any other students who do not have a photo linked will have a gray person icon displayed next to their name when you run the random name picker. Personally, I choose not to link any photos for any of my students and just keep it nice and simple. Now, even though I'm not going to link any photos for my students, I'm not going to delete the photo column because like I said, do not edit or even touch the blue cells, just leave them alone. Instead, I'm just going to leave all of the cells in that column empty. Now, there is one really important step Step that you have to complete in order for your random name picker to generate correctly. You actually have to publish the spreadsheet to the web. So in order to do that, go up to file and then select publish to the web. You don't need to make any changes to the next window that pops up. Just click the green publish button and then click the blue OK button on the next window. You can then click the X at the top corner of the publish to the web window in order to return to the spreadsheet. The final step is to access the web link. In order to do that, you need to click on the get the link here tab at the bottom. Shocking, I know. Then just click on the hyperlink in order to access your random name picker. Now the best tip I can give you is to save this link so that you can easily access it later. There are a couple of different ways you can save the link. I recommend adding it to your favorites or your bookmark bar, or if you use a web page saver similar to Symbaloo, you could save it there. If you are interested in a full video on how to use Symbaloo for a future episode of EdTech Made Easy, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Now that you have saved the web link, you will be able to easily access this random name picker and have it already customized to your roster. Now for the fun part, let's go ahead and explore the random name picker and see all of the features that it includes. The default tab is the spinner, which let me just say your students are going to love. This is a great way to randomly pick a student to volunteer for a lesson or to go and run an errand for you. Personally, I have seven Chromebooks available to me during indoor recess time and they are highly coveted for playing indoor recess games. So one way that I use the spinner is to randomly select the students that get to use the Chromebooks during that recess time. Notice I said random. The spinner is truly random, which means sometimes student names will be duplicated. If you want to randomly pick students, but you don't want to have any of their names repeat until everyone has been called on, you would want to use the single name tab or the lineup tab. The single name tab will only display one student name at a time, and it allows you to randomly select a new student by using the down arrow. You could also reshuffle it once you are ready for all of the names to start over, but in a new order. The lineup tab allows you to view your student roster, but in a random order. This can obviously be used to call students to line up, but it can also be used to dismiss students to an activity or even to call on students. Because multiple student names are displayed at one time, it is extremely useful for calling on students because they can see in advance when their turn will be so they can be prepared instead of being caught off guard. I use this option a lot during my morning meeting when I'm calling on students to share about their weekend or share about whatever it is that we're discussing. Next, you have tabs to create groups or teams. Groups will put students into to groups of specific sizes, whereas teams will put students into a specific number of groups. Hopefully that made sense. One great feature of this that I love is once you group your students, if you notice eh, one or two students that are just not going to work out well together in a group, you can actually move them around. Just click on one student's name and then click on the student that you want them to switch with and it will rotate them within the groups and move them. You also can use the rotate button at the bottom to shift all of the groups to the right. Haven't really figured out why you would need to do that yet, but it's an option. Possibly my favorite feature is the Jigsaw feature. Jigsaw is a cooperative learning strategy. I'm not going to go into detail with it, but you can Google it if you have no idea what I'm talking about. FYI, I'm talking about Jigsaw as in Jigsaw puzzle, not Jigsaw as in a jig saw. Mm. Essentially what Flippity does is it takes one member from each original group and puts them into a new group so students can meet with an original group and then end up meeting with a new group when they're doing jigsaw activities. You can also print the groups, which especially comes in handy if you want your students to work in groups when there is a substitute. You can pre-organize the groups on Flippity, make sure the students are all going to be able to get along, and then you can print off a copy and leave it for the substitute. When you click on the printer button at the bottom, it will change all of the colors into black and white so that it doesn't waste any ink when you print. Then you just have to print the web page. I personally just right click on the web page and then select print and go from there. 
Since you renamed your roster back when you made this spreadsheet, it will actually display at the top of the page when you print it, which is perfect if you are printing off different groups for different classes so the substitute won't get confused. If you need groups with more than five students or you need more than five teams, you can go to the more tab and you can select sizes up to 12. Flippy also has a seating chart option, but I'll be honest, I've never really used it because my desks are always in weird arrangements within my classroom. But the seating chart feature does allow you to move students around easily and you can add or subtract rows and columns in order to match the arrangement of your classroom. Just like with the other tabs, you can reshuffle the students and even print the page. One final feature of Flippity I did want to share is the timer. You can display a timer on the screen along with the student groups, which is extremely useful when your students are doing group work. All you have to do is click on the timer icon on the right hand side and then type in the amount of time you want. One downside to the timer is that you are not able to enter multi-digit numbers for the minutes. However, I did fiddle with this and I found a loophole. Instead of entering multi-digit numbers for the minutes, you want to convert your minutes into seconds. For example, if you wanted to set a timer for 15 minutes, you can multiply 15 by 60 to get 900 and enter 900 in the seconds. As soon as you start the timer, it actually converts that 900 seconds into 15 minutes and you're good to go. My final tip for you is to organize your Flippity spreadsheet into your Google Drive. You will notice my Google Google Drive is pretty organized. Are you surprised? Because you shouldn't be. So again, if you want me to do a future episode of EdTech Made Easy all about organizing your Google Drive, leave me a comment down below. Now you can see the Flippity spreadsheet that I saved to my Google Drive is now at the bottom underneath of my folders, which is very bothersome for me. Now you do have to keep this spreadsheet within your Google Drive. You cannot delete it. So I like to organize it into folders so I don't see it. I'm going to create a folder for my Flippity spreadsheet by going up to new on the left-hand side and then selecting folder. I'm going to rename this folder Flippity and then I'm going to move my spreadsheet into that folder. Then I'm going to move the Flippity folder into my teaching folder so it is nice and organized. I think I covered everything. If you enjoyed this video and you got some new ideas for how to use this in your own classroom, please give the video a thumbs up. Also make sure you share it out to your teacher friends. If you have any specific educational technology tools you would like me to cover on a future episode of EdTech Made Easy, please leave them down in the comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, thank you for watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you want to check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher Store, my Merchandise Store, and my Amazon Store are in the description box and I'll catch you guys in the next one.